Hello and good afternoon. The circumstances surrounding the death of the fugitive gunman Raoul Moat are to be investigated by the police watchdog. Moat killed himself in the early hours of this morning after a six-hour standoff with armed officers on a riverbank near Rothbury. It's emerged that taser stun guns were fired while attempts were being made to persuade him to give himself up peacefully. Greg Wood reports from Rothbury. Forensic teams have now moved in to make a minute examination of the river and the banks where Raoul Moat decided to end his life. A white tent covers the spot where Britain's most wanted man eventually shot himself. It was on stepping stones over the river in the very heart of Rothbury yesterday evening that police finally tracked down the man they'd been hunting for seven days. Members of the public were in the area at the time. A local news agent told us his son had been walking his dog by the river. He caught sight of someone in his eye to the right of him, who at first he just assumed was someone fishing. Um, and as he walked further on, the guy came out from behind the bushes and he looked at him and thought, is this the guy everyone's looking for? Um, and then he thought, yeah, it is the guy that people are looking for. So he turned and walked away from him. And within 20, 30 seconds, he was converged on by quite a large number of police with, with guns telling him just to run, run, run. During a six-hour standoff, police negotiators urged Raoul Moat in the grey top to put down his gun. Local residents were close enough to hear Moat's words. There's a floodlight on him. I would say but maybe he's a bit agitated by rubbing his face and what have you, the times I've observed him. But earlier on, he did, um, when the negotiators were talking to him, he actually said, that one thing that sticks in my mind is, um, I haven't got a dad he said, and he also said that um, nobody cares about me. But all the talking was in vain. Shortly after one o'clock in the morning, shouts rang out from the riverbank. A shot was heard. Raoul Moat's self-inflicted wound proved fatal. Police officers were striving to persuade Mr Moat to give himself up peacefully. During this time, officers discharged taser However, this did not prevent his death. The use of a taser on Raoul Moat before he shot himself will be a central plank of an independent inquiry into the circumstances surrounding his death. It'll examine why the taser was used and whether it was designed to try and prevent him from harming himself. We will be examining whether correct procedures were followed by Northumbria Police and the detail of how this incident came to a conclusion. This beautiful Northumbrian village is swiftly recovering from an extraordinary and disturbing week. But the question remains as to why it took so long to track down a fugitive who was hiding in the heart of this community. Greg Wood, BBC News, Rothbury. The police have revealed for the first time what lay behind Moat's threat to target the wider public. He'd recorded a message on a dictaphone where he said the rules had changed. We also learnt more about the psychological profile police built up during the week-long investigation. Raymond Buchanan reports. At the start, it seemed like a domestic incident. Raoul Moat, jealous of his ex-girlfriend's new lover, turned to extreme violence. But Moat was different. A quest for revenge led him to take on the police too. And they responded with one of Britain's highest profile manhunts. But today detectives revealed just what a threat he posed. At one of Moat's hideouts, police discovered a dictaphone recording with a chilling message. He disclosed his upset and annoyance at how the media had reported certain facts and believed the police may have been involved in this. At this time, he said the rules had changed and his threat had now moved to the wider public. And that made the need to understand the fugitive even more urgent. Detectives profiled the killer. It said he felt disrespected. He liked to be in control. His personality was rigid and inflexible. I've been absolutely terrified while he's been around, thinking, oh, has he come up here to look for me? You know, does he want to hurt me or does he want to speak to us? In his final hours, Moat was no longer in charge. 
Surrounded by armed police, he spent six hours facing capture. And so, once more, he took control. It might well be that at the latter, latter few moments of his own life, he felt that by taking his own life, he regained control from the police. The question now is, did the police act appropriately? Was the manhunt and the standoff which ended by this riverside the best way to deal with a controlling killer like Moat? And did the firing of that taser influence the final outcome? Raymond Buchanan, BBC News, Rothbury. Let's go live now to Greg Wood in Rothbury. Greg, what's the latest? Well, we've just had a statement from Sally Brown, the mother of Chris Brown, uh, who was shot and fatally injured by Raoul Moat uh, in Gateshead last Saturday. Uh, she said she was relieved that it was all over without any further injury or loss of life, but she asked to be left alone to grieve for her son in private. We've also been told within the past hour that, in fact, two tasers were deployed by two separate officers in those last moments or last hours of Raoul Moat's life. So questions for the police to answer about how this all ended, but also about the wider operation. It's pretty clear that Raoul Moat was either in or around uh, the village of Rothbury uh, for most of last week. There were numerous reports of sightings of him. It's even suggested he broke into people's allotments uh, to feed himself. So Britain's most wanted man, if you like, uh, remained hidden in hiding at the very heart of this massive police investigation. Greg, thank you. Greg Woods in Rothbury there. On to other news now, and the Archbishop of York, John Sentimu, has used his address to the Church of England Synod to attack criticism of the Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams. The speech follows reports that the appointment of a gay cleric, Geoffrey John, as Bishop of Southwark was blocked to stop the issue dividing the church. Dr Sentimu said the criticism of the leader of the church showed a general disregard for truth. A Royal Marine killed in an explosion in Afghanistan has been named as David Charles Hart. The 23-year-old from 40 Commando died while on foot patrol in, on Thursday in Sangin in Helmand province. His parents said they were immensely proud of his achievements. There were mixed fortunes for Britain's two McLaren drivers in qualifying for the British Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton salvaged fourth place as Red Bull's Sebastian um, Vettel beat teammate Mark Webber to take pole huge, position. But world champion Jensen Button had a miserable so, session right on and could only Jensen. manage 14. And that's it for now. I'll be back with more from the newsroom at 10 o'clock on BBC One. Now, though, it's time to join our news teams where you are. Have a good evening.